Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is Leah Kay and um, I am a lifeguard for the Disney College program, um, Spring Advantage 2019. And today's video is going to be basically what I wish I had had during my first week of being a lifeguard on my Disney College program. So basically like every question that I had that I couldn't find an answer to, I'm going to be talking about and answering in today's video. Um, this is just my experience. Um, everyone's experience might be a little different, but from what I understand, this is like the basic, like what you're gonna go through so, through your first week. So um, before we get started, um, I just wanted to say, if you're new to my channel, hello, um, welcome. Um, you should go ahead and click the subscribe button because it would mean a lot to me um, and you'll get to see a lot of cool Disney related videos. So let's get started. So on my phone right here, I have a list of basically all the information I wanna talk about in today's video. So today's video might be a little lengthy, I apologize, but this might help a lot because this is basically everything I wanted to know and couldn't find the answer to. So, so I was placed at Yacht and Beach Club Resort um, near Epcot. So that's two resorts and they're connected by one pool called Storm Long Bay. And it is considered a deep water pool. This is like a big question that everyone seems to have. The only resort that is considered deep water on Walt Disney World property is Yacht and Beach Club. If you get placed anywhere else, you are going to be taking the shallow water swim test unless you get placed at Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach Water Park. Um, because like everyone was kind of wondering like, oh, like is this resort considered deep water? Is it considered shallow water? No. The only people who have to take the deep water swim test are people who are placed at Yacht Beach Club, Blizzard Beach, or Typhoon Lagoon. So, when I first got there, my arrival date was January 28th, and on my itinerary, I had a drug test. So, I got there, I checked in, I had casting, and then at 1045 that morning, I had a drug test. Um, I my I live in Patterson and my drug test <clears throat> and my drug test was at the Commons so I just drove over to the Commons told security at the gate that I was there for my drug test and I went in. Um, you do not need to bring any medications with you. The only thing you need to bring with you is your housing ID um, and maybe I think you might need to bring your itinerary. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But they only asked for my um, housing ID. So. Like I said, you do not need to bring any medications with you. I am on two medications that like typically present as false positive on drug screens, so I brought them just in case, but they did not ask for them when I took my drug test. And if you do have anything that shows up and they think it might be a medication, they will call you. So I knew I was gonna get a call. So let me see what day I got the phone call. So my drug test was on the 28th. And on the 31st, I got a call from the people who did the drug test saying that um, they had a question about my drug test. So I called them back and they said, are you on any ADHD medications? Because we've received a false positive in our drug screen. We want to make sure that it is a false positive and not a positive. So basically, they just asked me to send a picture of my prescription. So that's what I did. And I was all clear. Um, a lot of people get really confused because you'll... If you're any other role other than lifeguard, you will get your training schedule as soon as you check in, I think. Like my roommates got their training schedule like on the 28th, the day that they checked in. Um, I did not. You will not receive your training schedule until you pass your swim test. Um, so don't freak out if you're like, oh my god, like all my other roommates are getting their training schedules and I'm not getting mine, like is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. They just don't want to schedule you for training if you're not going to pass your swim test. So. Now on to the swim test. So the swim test takes place at Mickey's Retreat across from Chatham Square. So if you're at Patterson like I am, you can walk there or you can drive there. There is a lot of parking. So basically you're just gonna pull up and like just say, hi, I'm here for the lifeguard swim test and they'll let you in. So how it's gonna work is you're gonna get there. They're going to separate you by resort. So they had like, all the people who were placed at Yacht Beach Club were in one group, and then I think, I can't remember which one it was, but there was another resort place at ours. So my roommate, Brittany, is a lifeguard at Animal Kingdom Lodge, so she took her swim test separately from mine because she's considered a shallow water lifeguard. So you'll take your vision test, your hearing test, and then you'll take your swim test. So the vision test, um, I was really worried about that because I do have some vision problems, but the thing is, is that you are allowed to wear contacts or glasses when you take your swim test. 
when you take your revision test. But if you need contacts or glasses to pass your vision test, you must wear them while you are guarding. So if you don't want to wear contacts or glasses while you are guarding, don't wear them to um, your vision test because if you, if you need those to pass, you'll have to wear them on the stand. Um, and then the hearing test is basically you'll stand in a circle, they'll blow a whistle, and you raise your hand when you see it. So I'm going to talk about the deep water test because that's what I took and there's a lot of questions about the deep water test. Um, so basically what it is, is it's a 200. So that's four times back and forth. So one, two, that's a, that's a 50. So you'll do that four times. Um, you, it is not timed, like not, they will tell you over and over and over again that it is not timed. Please take your time. Don't rush because you're going to tire, tire yourself out. It's not timed, but once you start swimming, you cannot stop. Um, you are allowed to do freestyle or breaststroke. You can do a combination of two, so you can do one lap free, one lap breast, vice versa, but you can't do like backstroke or butterfly or anything like that. I don't know why you would want to do that because those are more like tiring, but yeah, freestyle and breaststroke are the only strokes you are allowed to use when you swim. Um, for the brick, this is what I was freaking out most because I was like, oh my god, like what's gonna happen? So you are in the water when you like go get your brick. You're not gonna like get out and jump in. Um, they might do it differently at different times, but because it was really cold outside, um, like cold by like Floridian standards, it was like 45, and the pool is heated by the way, so don't worry about that. Um, so for shallow water, I believe you're standing in five feet and like they drop it below you and all you have to do is reach down and grab it. But because I was a deep water guard, what they had us do is we would be in 10, it was, I think it was eight feet, that's where they put it. So it's at the deepest end of, um, the Mickey's Retreat pool. So they'll drop it and you have to go down feet first. So you can't like dive down under and get it. You have to go down feet first. So you push yourself down with your hands. When your feet hit the bottom of the pool, you're going to squat down, grab the brick and then push yourself up. And then all you have to do is hold the brick out of the water and you can drop it back down and you're done. So that's for, that's the brick portion of the deep water test. And if you're shallow water guard, all you will do is swim a 50 and get the brick. You don't have to do the next part. But for deep water, what we have to do is we have to tread water with our hands out of water for two minutes. Seems like a long time, but it's not like your arms are fully out of the water. No, all you have to do is have your palms facing up and out of the water, and they will play a game with you. So they played like alphabet with us. So like you list like something for each letter of the alphabet. I made it go by really quickly. So. I took my swim test, I believe, on January 30th, and I did not start my lifeguard class until February 5th. So I did have a couple of days in between, but I did have welcome to ops in between that, so I had a couple of days off where I could go to the parks, but then I had to go to like my lifeguard training class. So on your trainings, on your I No, on your um, training schedule that you first get, it'll only show one day of lifeguard class. That's not your only day of lifeguard class. That's the first day of it. It's three consecutive days. So It'll show you, like, on, if on your itinerary it says lifeguard class day one, on February 5th, your lifeguard class will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That was mine. So now I'm going to talk about, like, my training class because I feel like a lot of people are really confused on what exactly you have to do. So on the first day of lifeguard training class, it is held at Mickey's Retreat all three days. And the very first thing you're going to get when you get to your training class is you're going to get your whistle. So basic whistle, you keep your name tag right here. And you're also going to get your hip pack. So it's like a red fanny pack and what you're going to get inside is something called a seal easy. It looks like this. It's for when you're doing um, rescue breathing. They don't want us to do mouth to mouth. So what you do is you place this over the person's mouth, press down on it to seal it, blow through this. So, and then you're also going to get gloves. You cannot do anything in lifeguard training without gloves. So any CPR, any first aid you do, you must be wearing gloves. That's part of the test, actually. Like I said, you're going to get your whistle, your hip pack, and your seal easy when you first get there. The first thing that you're going to learn how to do is CPR on an adult and CPR on a child. You are going to learn CPR on an infant, but that's not until day two. So you're basically going to spend all morning 
um, learning how to do CPR on an adult and a child. And then you're going to have an hour for lunch, and that's when you're going to get in the pool. So on the first day, you're going to learn your water rescues. So there are three water rescues in Ellis Lifeguard. It's called the front drive, the rear hug, and the duck plug. But if you are a deep water guard like me, you do have to learn an additional rescue. So if you're not a deep water guard, don't worry about it. Um, and then also what you're going to learn is how to scan your water. So a big thing about LS lifeguarding is making sure that you are constantly scanning your water and keeping your 1020 protection standard. You're gonna learn what that means when you go through training, but so they're gonna do um, scanning drills with you. So you're gonna stand at the end of your pool with a lifeguard tube in your whistle and they're going to throw things into the water. Um, either a vat, which is like, it's really hard to explain. A vat is like a silhouette of a person basically and they'll throw it and it sinks to the bottom of the pool or they're going to have a baby doll that are really creepy. I hate those baby dolls. And they're going to throw them into the pool and you have 10 seconds to see them and 20 seconds to dive in and get them out of the water. So once you are done with learning your rescues, that's all you're gonna do in the water on the first day. Once you're done with learning your rescues, you're going to get out of the pool and you're going to dry off and then you're going to sit in the classroom for basically like a couple more hours and you're going to watch a bunch of videos. So um, you do have to watch this video that was really hard to watch. It's of a like five-year-old boy drowning. Um, it, like I'm warning you now, we I didn't know that we had to watch this. It's very difficult to watch, but the little boy makes it, I swear. Um, so you learn about like also watching videos, you go through like a slideshow of like the six stages of drowning um, and then that's it. Then on the second day, you are going to learn CPR on an infant and choking on adults and infants. For adults, it's you're going to learn the Heimlich Maneuver, I'm pretty sure you, you all should know what the Heimlich Maneuver is by now. And then you're going to learn how to, like, how to do conscious choking on an infant, on a baby. So you're going to spend the morning learning how to do that and then also practicing your CPR from the first day and then you're going to have lunch and then when you get done with lunch you're going to come back and you're going to get back in the water and you're going to learn rapid extra extrications on backboards and you're also going to learn how to deal with spinals. Um, just gonna say pay attention to spinals because I got tested on spinals in my test out on day three. Um, so basically learning how to deal with a spinal injury and how to get people out of the pool on a backboard. Then that's all, that's basically all you're gonna do in the pool on that day. And then you're gonna get out, watch more videos, um, and that's it for day two. So on day three, which is the last day, so your test out, you're going to have a little bit of time to review your study guide and time to practice CPR. Once you've practiced that, you're going to go ahead and go into your written and CPR exam. And I'm going to explain how that works. So they're going to divide the classroom like in half, on one half there are going to be tables where you're going to take your written exam and then on the other side you are going to be tested on CPR on an adult, infant, and child. So you're going to take your written exam first. Don't stress about your written exam. Um, I was stressing about it and it was really easy. I actually got a perfect score on my written exam and on my CPR exams though. <sighs> Just gonna mention that. Um, so it's a 60 question multiple, no, it's a 50 question multiple choice test. I finished it in maybe 15 minutes. And then once you're done, you're gonna go wait outside and they're going to call you in when they're ready and you're going to perform your CPR on your adult, infant, and child. They're going to like tell you like, oh, like you see a person on the ground and they're not breathing. And then they're gonna say like, oh, this person doesn't have a pulse or they do have a pulse, but they're not breathing and you're just gonna have to go through those motions. So um, after that, you have lunch. And then once you get back from lunch, you have your team test outs. So you are divided into teams. I was in the team of four, I believe, and there were eight teams. So, how it works is they're going to divide the pool in half, so teams 1, 2, 3, and 4 were on one side, and 5, 6, 7, and 8 were on the other side, so they can get through it quicker. Um, so, how the team test outs work is you are going to be, so there's four of you, and you're all going to be around the pool guarding, and people in the water are going to either drop vats, um, drop the babies, or they're going to pretend to drown. So, like I said, people in the pool are going to either be dropping vats when you least expect it, they're going to drop their babies, or they're going to pretend to be an active drowning victim. So you have to dive in and save those, and then typically once you do that, that's when you're gonna go into your actual situation. So someone in the pool will either be unconscious or they will have a spinal injury, and you have to 
um, accurately get them out of the water and treat them. So for my team, we had a spinal, so we had to get them into SMR and get them out of the water on the backboard. And then while we were um, treating their spinal, someone ran up and said, help, help, my baby's choking. So we actually had two situations. So two of us were um, working on the spinal injury and two of us were working on the choking infant. Um, and then once Reedy Creek professionals arrive, that's when your um, test stop is done and they will tell you if you passed or not. Surprise, I passed. Um, so every situation is different. It all depends on your team. They're, like no one, no one is gonna get the same um, situation. So just letting you know that. And then once everyone completes that, you are done that you have finally passed your lifeguard class. Um, all you have to do is you have to sign your license. You have to sign like, saying like, oh, I've like successfully uh, like received this treatment. And then um, you have to like fill out an eval for your instructors and then they let us watch um, the scene from the office where they perform CPR. So yeah, and then we were done. Um, I am going to say that we started with 37 people in our class and I believe only 20 of us ended up getting our lessons. So um, people do fail the test, it happens. Um, so a couple people failed the CPR written exam and some people actually just walked out. They decided that they didn't want to be a lifeguard anymore and so um, I'm not sure what happened to them. I think they might have gotten recast, but I, we don't know anything that happened to them. So just keep that in mind that people do fail and they do walk out. But as long as you know what you're doing, you are not going to fail. As long as you pay attention in class, you are not going to fail. Um, so that's like all of the basic information about your training. Um, and I have a couple more things that you need to know. So. You will get costumes at your resort orientation. Um, I work at Yacht Beach Club, so Yacht Beach Club's resort orientation is called Welcome Aboard. Um, they do provide you a bathing suit. I know that was kind of, I was like wondering like, oh God, like they're not gonna give us a bathing suit. Sorry, I can hear fireworks from my apartment. I'm pretty sure that's illuminations going off. Um, Disney does provide you a bathing suit and they do provide you either Crocs or white tennis shoes, but if you want to wear Tevas, which are approved for the job, you do have to buy Tevas on your own, so just keep that in mind. Um, you won't get hub access in your lifeguard training class. Um, I completed my lifeguard training class on Thursday, which was yesterday, and today's Friday, and I don't have hub access yet. I believe I'm going to get it tomorrow when I have my resort hospitality and recreation class at Disney University. So just keep that in mind. You are not going to get hub access until after you complete your lifeguard training, most likely. Or some people in my class had already completed their resort orientation, and they got hub access there. So it like varies for some things. And I just wanted to say I was freaking out about being placed as a lifeguard because I did not have any experience as a lifeguard and um, I passed with perfect score on my written exam and my CPR test so you don't have to worry about it. Um, only a couple of people in my class actually had lifeguard experience and they were fine. Um, the only thing you need to know how to do to like become a lifeguard is you just need to know how to swim. Like that's it. That's it. It's as simple as that. Um, so I think that is all I wanted to talk about. I might make another video about what your on-the-job training as a lifeguard is like after I complete that because I complete that this week. Um, but yeah, um, if you guys have any other questions about being a lifeguard on the Disney College program, feel free, please feel free to um, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, so that's it. Um, before I go, I just wanted to say that if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe already. Thank you guys. Bye.